Hey guys, what's going on? It's Nock. Welcome along to a brand new video. Today we're going to play Futashiki, I think is the way you pronounce that, which is a pencil puzzle that involves greater than and equal signs, and you have to place them all in the grid with pretty much Sudoku uh, rules, so you can't have repeating digits in rows and columns. Hopefully, as I go along, I'll be able to explain a little bit more, but let's jump in for now and um, see where we can get started. And I'm going to concentrate for a start on this three right here as we have two cells which feed into it here. So both of these two cells here have to be greater than the three. We're only working up to sixes, so we know that a five, six, and a four, five have to be placed like that in one in those cells. They're the only possible candidates for those cells. So that's a good um, little start there. And I'm also looking across here, and I'm looking at the sixes, and the only place the six can go is here because this cell has to have something higher than it in here. This cell also has to have something higher than it, as does this one here. So that's a six placed. And sometimes with this puzzle, it's wise to look at your highest number and your lowest number and work out what where the possibilities for those numbers can go and then work from there. So, yeah, we've got quite a few interesting things going on. This this top row looks a little bit complicated, so we'll come back to that in a bit. But I'm looking here at row two, uh, sorry, column two here. So we've got four cells in a row here that all go um, lower. We've also got this little branch out here to the left as well. So we know we've got four cells, so we have to use four numbers. Therefore, the only two, the, the, the highest numbers we can use at the top is five and six. And we can work down the chain like that. So that would be a four and a five. That would be a four and a three. Now here, we can't use a three. So this would have to be a two or a one. And they are our only possible combinations. Um, or could we, actually, let's think about this. Could we put a four here? A four, that would be a three, that'd be a two, and that'd be one. Okay, so that would work as well. Nearly missed that. So, yeah, look look for the long chains in this game can also help. Knowing that we've got the maximum number of a five here, this could be four, three, or a two. Well, it can't be a two. And this could be a three, a two, and a one. Like so. Okay. Row four now is catching my eye because I now know that the only place I can place a six is here. And because of our restrictions here and here, I also know this is the only place I can place a one because of that chain of command and the way the numbers roll down. So this then becomes a three, four, or a five. Okay. So um, looking at the next column next to this one, one could go there or one could go there, but they are the only two possible combinations for that one. In this box, one could go there, or one could go there. Ones could go here, or here. Uh, this is the only place for a one. The one has to go here, because every other cell requires it to be higher than an adjacent cell. So we could place the one here. And then in our final row, one's there. Ones could pretty much go anywhere they want. So next thing I like to do is because of the pencil marks, I like to press on a number that I've actually got and that will highlight the pencil marks. And I can then look down the rows and the columns, see if there's any uniqueness. And I can see in column four, there is a unique one here. It's the only place in this column where a one can sit. So that will eliminate that. And in turn, that has now made this position here the only place a one can sit which in turn unlocks that as a one, and in turn unlocks that as one. So that's all our ones now placed, just like that. Just like that, which is really good indeed. You can probably do something similar with the sixes. So as I say, sixes and ones are the best numbers to work with. Your highest and your lowest number are the best numbers to work with because they are the ones that are most restricted. We've got sixes in there. Six could be there or there in that row. And sixes can't be there, could be there, 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 could be there. And then we'll highlight the six again, and we'll look down the rows or the columns just to see if there is any uniqueness. But on this occasion, there is 
not. So those sixes can't go in there. I don't know why I placed them there. Does that change anything? Sixes, two there, two there. No, okay, so there's still no more uniqueness I can find them with the sixes. So let's carry on looking. We got. Okay, I'm looking at fives. And actually, no, we can look at twos. There's only one place in row two that a two can go, and that is this one. This then becomes a four or a five. And this means it has to be a five or a six there. We've got like a little, we've got a couple of pairs going on here. So that's a five, six pair. That's a five, six pair. So we can eliminate the six from this column there in that position. It doesn't give us anything unique at the moment. It does tell me though, this is either a three or a four. And this is either a two or a four. Okay. Let's look for if find anything out about twos at the minute. Still a lot of places that twos could go. Actually, let's look at the bottom. Two can go there. Or two could go there. Only in those positions, two can go there. Because two, because we placed all the ones, two is now effectively our lowest number. So two is it's a good number to work with next. Okay, we've got the pairs here. The twos and the twos have got to go in these one of these cells here. If that one goes there, then the two's got to go there. If that one goes there, the two's got to go there. So we can now rule out hopefully twos there or there. So a two can't go there. So, sorry guys, I'm having a lot of trouble with my phone today for some reason. I don't know why. It keeps dropping from my Wi Fi. So, I've got a two there or a two there. I can remove a two from here, place a two here, and then a two is going to be sat just there. So, that's apart from those, these, these corners, that's the twos placed. And then our next lowest number becomes a three. Can we readdress any sixes maybe? No, not at the minute. The fact that we've got no threes and like fours and fours and fives placed at the minute isn't helping either. Actually, we can place a four here because of the five, six pair restriction here. So that becomes a three. Maybe threes is the next number to address. Three could be there or there. Be a three. That could be a three. We'll place a two there, so therefore a three could also be there or there. And a three could be there, there. Threes could be anywhere, really. Can't be there. I don't know why I placed a three there. Three has to be here. Okay. Those numbers two, so that could be three, four. That could be a four, five, six. Could be any one of those numbers. Back to the threes a minute. Three has to be there. We could be about to solve this one. Three, two, two. Any place left for a three? Yep, three's there. This now unlocks a lot of this. Six, 
five, four, four, five, six, six, four, five, four, six, five, five, four. There we go. Puzzle complete. So yeah, hopefully um, you got the gist of that one. Um, I say it wasn't too, it's not too complicated. It's just like greater than or equal to the uh, adjacent cells. But thank you very much for watching, guys. Let me know what you think of it down below. But if you've got any other puzzles that you'd like me to play, please do let me know in the comments down below, guys. But until next time, I've been not. you've been awesome. Thank you for watching. Take care, stay safe, happy gaming.